Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is April 30th. Last day of April is upon us and we're taking a look at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see some energy out of the Pacific Ocean. This is eventually going to make its way towards the state of California. Frontal system will bring some energy down across the state. Could bring some precipitation all the way down through Southern California. will be some mountain snows as well. And in the meantime, as we go through this week, we're going to have some thunderstorm activity across some of the higher terrain. You're going to want to hang out and see that as we go through the video here today. Lightning strike activity yesterday. Looks like we had a thunderstorm out there near the coastal range. The Sacramento Valley would be right about there. And there's some of the northern Sierra Nevada and the Cascades uh, where they kind of meet there. Lake Tahoe area saw so some thunderstorm activity as well. That's going to kind of be a reoccurring theme here over the next few days. Taking a look at the visible satellite imagery, you can see the marine layer in towards Southern California, San Diego, Los Angeles, up the central coast, up towards the Bay Area. But as you get across northern California, some of the coastal areas out here, Point Arena, for example, Fort Bragg, and you're up towards Crescent City, you're doing pretty good. You've got some sunshine out there this morning, except for a little bit of low cloud activity right there. So uh, if you guys want to check out my ENSO El Nino Southern Oscillation update, I put that out yesterday. Check out my Patreon page down below. You can click on that link and watch that video to see what is coming for the summer, the fall, and the winter months upcoming here and what phase the ocean will be in. Now, uh, Tempest Home Weather Station, this is great for lightning detection. Uh, this weather station is very fun for the price. You can't beat it. I highly recommend that weather station. Click on the link down below as well. Now, day one convective outlook. You can see they do have the higher train of California uh, and included in that the general thunderstorm risk. And this is for tomorrow, day two. Also, you'll see how this starts to creep out towards the coastal range there as well. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. And there is day three still includes portions of California. And again, National Weather their service Sacramento on a daily basis. They are on top of this 15 to 35 percent probability of thunderstorms. That is for today and tomorrow p.m. Mountain mainly for I-80 southward. And then we got Friday p.m. and Saturday North Sacramento Valley foothills and the mountains. And you can see the impacts from some of these thunderstorms. This is a Phoenix National Weather Service and they do cover portions of Arizona. And this graphic was just too good to pass up here. They've got this colder pattern here showing and I'll show you that here in the upper levels of the atmosphere in a moment. Also, Reno National Weather Service, which does cover portions of California. You can see as we start to head off in towards the weekend, another arrival of a late season storm, increasing shower activity. Now, here we go. So a wider view of things here. There's Hawaiian Islands to the bottom left. You're looking at California here. We're looking at 500 millibars. They're about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. It gives you a good idea of ge where general ridge and trough position is. So... This is a ridge up here across the Pacific Ocean, and even though you see above normal heights, we're still dealing with kind of this troughing here across a lot of the southwest portion, or I should say the west coast, and it extends back up across the Intermountain West. And we've keeps this trough going here in this upper level low right off our coastline as we go through Thursday and on to Friday, the next system starts to arrive. And you can see a lot of this energy is scheduled to come into California. This would be bringing some interesting weather and again, some mountain snows with it. You can see this big ridge out over the Pacific Ocean helping to drive this cooler northwest flow, carving out this trough across the southwest portion of the USA. That trough will be with us for a few days. Fairly slow moving there, kind of meanders across portions of Arizona as we go on in through Monday night with the ridge extended all the way back up across the Pacific Northwest. If we take a look at that at 10,000 feet, you can kind of see the trough and a little bit of that upper level low right there hanging out with us this week. But then you can see the colder air mass arrive as we go through the weekend coming up and look at that carve out right across the southwest USA. This low becomes a little bit closer where it gets cut off, looks like from the westerly flow. And in fact, we can check that out a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and look at some of the upper level winds with that, with that as well here. So let's take a look here. You can kind of see how the jet stream is up here and it does kind of get cut off and the close low starts to do its own thing and that's why it does meander and slow down here across the southwest USA. So taking a look at six hour precipitation type. So again, this afternoon, thunderstorms across the higher train. You cannot rule some of that out towards the coastal range here in Ventura, Santa Barbara County there across the higher train. Watch out for that. You might get some rain shower activity there. Maybe even a stray lightning strike with that. Tomorrow afternoon, again, another round and some of this could be prolific lightning producing storms, especially across the trans 
transverse range, again, just north of Los Angeles near Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. We scroll off in towards Friday, kind of a little bit of a repeat there. Shower activity again. You can see transverse range, Sierra Nevada, up towards the Cascades, Klamath Range, and up in towards Oregon. And then we go on into Saturday, and that cooler air mass starts to work its way in here. You see some mountain snows flying. We scroll on in through Sunday. You can see the spin in the atmosphere and some higher elevation snowfall, maybe even making its way all the way down towards Southern California. Some precipitation for Southern California as well, maybe a bit for Los Angeles and San Diego as we go on into this upcoming weekend. And then again, as we scroll off in towards Monday, you can kind of see the low pressure center spinning here across Arizona. Now, total precipitation in inches. Let's just kind of scroll through here, and you can see the daily showery activity there across the higher terrain. But as we go on in towards this weekend, you can see this system on the European has been highlighting and targeting portions of San Diego. You can see maybe a third of an inch of rain, a little bit here for Los Angeles. We're not looking at flooding conditions or anything like that, but you're definitely going to notice the chill in the atmosphere in Nevada and portions of Sierra Nevada getting a pretty good shot of precipitation here over the next five to six days. So the ensemble mean is all also something fairly similar there. This is the average of all 50 ensemble members of the European model, and you can see it does target and favor San Diego better than it does Los Angeles precipitation amounts. So total snow could share ratio in inches. As these thunderstorms are going on, some of the higher terrain will get a little bit of snowfall out of this, but as we go through the weekend, you can see those amounts increasing here, especially as we go through Saturday night and on in through the day on Sunday. Some of the central and southern Sierra Nevada and some of the Southern California higher terrain, again, could be getting a few inches out of this system as it meanders and moves its way through. <clears throat> so uh, I want to show you the high resolution model here, composite reflectivity, and I'm going to update this because I believe this model is still coming in as we speak. This goes out about 60 hours. This is what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next couple of days. So this is this afternoon across the higher terrain, but you cannot rule out some of the shower activity there. You can kind of see Santa Barbara and Ventura County right there across the higher terrain. So as we scroll through tonight, look at this shower right there. You know, it's pretty interesting there. I think it'd be a prolific lightning producer. And we scroll off in towards Thursday. You can kind of see the spin in the atmosphere there. And look at some of this activity here. Those would be prolific lightning producers on the day. Thursday yet again. You kind of see the motion of this as well. These are kind of creeping out of the east towards the west. So this could be pushing out over some areas. And again, remember that on Thursday, some of the general motion of these storms is from east to west. And then we go on in through Friday afternoon. Yet again, thunderstorm activity popping off there. And you can see the next frontal system starting to take shape there as we go through Friday afternoon. So here's lightning flash density potential. This is for today, higher terrain. This is the high resolution rapid refresh. But look at tomorrow again across the transverse range, Santa Barbara, Ventura County, even Los Angeles County, some of the higher terrain. Again, showing a pretty good signal for some lightning activity and thunderstorms here as we go through Thursday afternoon, especially. Now, this is two meter temperature anomaly. So you can kind of see how interior areas are above normal, coastal areas slightly below normal. But watch as this next system starts to roll in here this week and you can clearly see the pattern change that will be coming. You will feel this all across the entire region from Arizona, Nevada, desert areas, and the entire state of California, of course. Now, looking at uh, five-day precipitation anomaly, you can kind of see this little bit of a difference but for what we've been getting a lot of the season here last fall and winter. You know, we were dealing with that sharp cutoff where Northern California was getting a lot more precipitation than Southern. So a little bit of a change here, at least as far as the anomaly is concerned. Nevada, some of the Sierra Nevada and some of Southern California, the higher train especially, getting a bit nor uh, more than normal. Uh, daily two meter max temperature. This is today, Wednesday, April 30th. Plentiful 80s, some upper 80s for some of the valley areas. The desert's getting into the 90s here. Southern California, Los Angeles, San Diego is up towards 70. Los Angeles into the 70s. We go on in through tomorrow. There's Thursday, Friday. A little bit of a cool down starts, but watch by Saturday. Look at that change here. Some areas are going to be 20 plus degrees colder here for the Sacramento Valley uh, between where we are now and on Saturday. So be prepared for that. Then you can see by Sunday, look at even the desert areas are only up into the 70s there. You got to go way off across portions of Mexico to really warm up or some of southeast Arizona. And then we go to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We start to bounce those temperatures back here as we go through next week. 
So look at the snowpack. We're still at night, uh, 74% there. And we're at that time of the year where we start to decline in the snow water equivalent and the snowpack across the higher terrain. But this next system will again provide a little bit of a pause. We'll probably bump these numbers up, which is a good thing. Six to 10 day, that below normal signal continues. The above normal signal for precipitation. And otherwise, I hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We will do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.